Hi. Um, I wanted to introduce you today to uh, one more standing walking lesson. Um, this is a this is a little more advanced yet, um, and it's a it's kind of a big lesson, and I'm gonna once again shrink it into something that seems possibly a lot easier than what it really is. Um, the, the main theme of this lesson is standing on one leg and it's a lesson that needs to be taken like every Feldenkrais lesson but maybe even more so with ease and, and, uh, and uh, I guess let's call it compassion. Okay, uh, don't, don't overdo it, don't, don't be too hard on yourself, this is very challenging. Okay, all right. If you, if you like, please uh, join me. If, you're not, if not, just just look first and then maybe experiment on your own, all right? So it's a good idea to start with a chair so you can place a hand on. Once again, the rule is, is that if you lean on the chair, we just have it for balance, right? And eventually, as the lesson progresses, we, we stop touching it, okay? So the beginning of the lesson is just simply standing, um, and shifting the weight into, or, or putting a little bit more weight on one leg, turning the other leg off to the side, the, the heel of the other leg off to the side, and shifting into it. So once again, you stand on the left leg, I stand on the left leg, I lift the right heel a little bit, I swing it outside behind me, and I shift my weight into the right leg, into the heel of the right leg, and I end up facing this way. Okay? So, just like that. So what happens is, when I shift all of my weight into the heel of the right leg, the left leg has barely any weight in it. So my toes, the toes of the right foot, of the left foot, are gently touching the floor, right? And they're really helping with balance. But I can lift that leg and remain standing on the, on the right heel. And that is really the goal, right? But we don't want to get the goal ahead of the process. So it's really important that we honor the process and gradually find our ease in it, okay? So here are some really important details that are um, not so easy to follow, but pretty easy to understand, okay? So, we want to pay attention to a whole bunch of different places in us that are interfering with our balance, okay? This, this lesson is about balance, about improving balance, standing on one leg. So, once again, a soft hand on the chair, twist the back leg that you're going to go into out to the side, shift into it and all the way to the heel, right? You can use either the hand on the chair or the toes of the other foot softly touching the floor, right? You come back to the center, swing the heel out, move into it. And now you begin to challenge yourself. Is my breath, breath relaxed? Is my belly, more specifically, soft and relaxed? Am I tensing up? in the back of my neck, in the front of my neck, in my throat? Am I clenching, clenching my teeth? Am I doing this? You know, that for some people that is a must and that's okay to start with, okay? So if you feel that you do this and like that, you gradually let your arms remain relaxed on your side. You begin to pay attention to your upper chest and see that your, your thoracic spine is relaxed and vertical. That your shoulders are relaxed, which is a very, very difficult task to pay attention to. How do you learn to relax your shoulders? And I say this from my experience. This is one of my challenges. How do I relax my shoulders? How do I work in this world without using my shoulders to do the work, right? especially when I'm being challenged with balance like that. And then you gradually find yourself, maybe sometimes, 
lifting the leg easily and remaining in perfect balance. It may surprise you that sometimes you are doing that. Again, this is not the same as the knee up, okay? This is very different. We keep the other leg long and we just let it lift from the floor. So we use those flexors here in a different way than if we would have done that. And when you find yourself really sort of finding your place there, not interfering with your breath, not interfering with anything, and really being balanced there, you can savor it for a moment. This is really nice. Um, this is, what, like I said, and I want to repeat myself, this is a very, very challenging lesson, okay? Uh, ultimately, we're aiming for a rotation. I'm going to go to the other side, to the other side right? Shifting all the way back to the back, to the heel of the left leg, and looking for the stability. Do my eyes go to the floor? Do my he does my head look down? Or can I remain relaxed? And once again, is my pelvis relaxed? Is my left leg, the leg I'm standing on, tensing up or is it relaxed? Does it allow for the weight to travel through me into the heel, into the ground? Once again, don't mistake this for this is a proper way or a correct way to stand, right? Standing on the heel in this, in this lesson has specific reasons, but it's not about doing things correctly or incorrectly. This is just, you can look at it as training, right? As training in improving balance. Except we have all these habits that are very deeply rooted in us. We're very conditioned to do things in a certain way that we learned to do many, many, many years ago as toddlers and kids, right? And these habits are rooted in us. So, if, if this is what I do and there is some kind of a tensing up in my, in my floating ribs down below here in the lower back, in the lower thoracic spine, in, above my lumbar spine, then they would continue to do that. They would continue to do that and it will take a lot of practice to begin to let everything relax, soften, become more, better aligned. At which point, once again, Lifting the other leg will begin to be a lot easier, okay? So play with it, leave it, go down to the floor, rest, come back to doing it, okay? And, and it's not a bad idea to come back to, the, to, to this a few days in a row. The next stage, if you're interested to take it to the next level, would be to do the exact same thing and to lean a little, to relax, to bend a tiny bit at the knee and at the hip, just a tiny bit, and to lean a hair more forward. Okay? And you may find that this helps you with balance, or this is more challenging for you, Ultimately, at the moment you're on your heel, can the other foot just lift without any worry, without any worry of falling, without any, with a strong sense of balance, right? And once again, the training for this, practicing it, could take a while, okay? I, I know I'm repeating myself, but this is so critical. Some people look at these lessons and think, okay, that doesn't look so complicated. This is complicated. This is very complicated. This is very challenging. And this is working through, again, some very deep-rooted habits that might not be very useful in trying to balance yourself on one leg. You may find, you, you may be surprised to discover that your non-dominant leg sometimes supports you better than the dominant one. If you feel that you do stuff with your hands, that you clench your teeth, that you strain something in your face, if you feel those things come up, right? 
take notice of them and see if you can gradually eliminate them, right? One great way of, because the hands for a lot of people are, are flailing around, hold, trying to help the balance. Um, one of the best ways to do is to just hold the hands like this, right? And when you do this, you can feel with one hand if the other hand is doing something. Typically, I think of myself as someone who has an easier time standing well, more balanced on the left leg. Though, when I play with these processes, oftentimes I discover that it's the right that stands better. It changes day, from day to day. It changes on, even in one day, I could come back to the process and find something a little different. But again, I strongly recommend for you to play with these. And, and when you have discovered how to do these two variations of standing on one leg and then on bending a little bit and maybe ever so slightly rounding a little bit forward, um, you can begin to, to do it from side to side, right? So you see, it's not just the foot that turns behind, it's the pelvis too. All right? This is not the complete lesson, but it's, it's, it's a really good part of it. It's the part that I think is really valuable for, for almost anyone. Um, and I may introduce to you the second part of this lesson in the future, but it, it becomes that much more intense. So um, depending on feedback and, and what I hear from people, I may, I may go there. But this, once again, this is a wonderful, wonderful lesson. I, I strongly recommend for you to play with it and uh, share with me your experiences, write comments. I will see you next week. Take care. Bye-bye.